Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map. We are a couple of days away from the full moon in Capricorn in tropical system and in the constellation of Capricorn this time as well. It is the second time um, we have a full moon this month uh, in the Gregorian calendar anyway. And I wanted to speak about it a little bit because it's first of all quite unique that we have two full moons in the same zodiac sign uh, in Capricorn in one month. And uh, when we look at the stars that inform um, the ecliptic zodiac signs, the first full moon was um, informed by the stars of the Sagittarian um, constellation. And this second full moon is actually informed by the stars of Capricorn. So I get a sense that this full moon is um, very potent and um, because it's also backed up by the stars of Capricorn, it, um, it is really strong and powerful in um, and infused with Capricornian energy. I'm going to show you a couple of different cards and we are going to just take a fun a mythological and psychological uh, and astrological route um, journey uh, around the sign of Capricorn and around what energy this full moon uh, part in particular wants to uh, give us. So without further ado, let's start with Sabian symbols. I was uh, looking at, um, at the degrees and I noticed uh, while looking at tropical um, chart of this full moon, as you can see, the moon is on 29 degrees, so critical last degree of the zodiac sign of Capricorn, um, and then it will be moving into Aquarius, and the sun is on last critical degree of Cancer, so there is, of course, the opposition that happens when the full moon happens, and conjunction of sun and moon when there's new moon. So we have the last degrees of the sign, um, uh, and the opposition and at the same time the moon is actually conjoining like in a very very tight conjunction with Pluto that's um, retrograding and going to go back into Capricorn so it's actually going closer to the moon and the moon is moving closer towards the Pluto so very tight conjunction um, uh, of Pluto and also this moon is uh, tightly um, trining Mars so what's interesting about it is when I looked at this particular chart, I noticed that the moon is on 29 degrees, the sun is on 29 degrees, Neptune is on 29 degrees of Pisces. And I thought that's fascinating how the 29 degrees repeat. And then I noticed also that Uranus is on 26 degrees Taurus and Mercury is on 26 degrees Leo. So Uranus is also squaring Mercury at the time of this new moon, which is quite interesting as well because Uranus is called the higher octave of Mercury and um, in some way expands on what Mercury um, delivers, you know, because it's kind of beyond the known universe to us. So let's look at the degrees of um, of, at the Sabian degrees of these, these particular degrees, okay? All right, so just to depict it with some form of imagery, we have Sun opposition Moon, so Moon talking about our emotions and waves that roll in after uh, day after day, and Sun vaguely or broadly speaking speaks about our self-confidence when we need to when we need to shine so full moons are usually quite intense time because our kind of confidence what we want to do our active side it's in opposition to what we feel and what we actually maybe even subconsciously um, are governed by moon is very um, very intuitive but it's also very instinctual whereas sun uh, seems in astrology to um, uh, can be very egoistical but at the same time brings light and awareness into uh, into the darkness right and then the darkness informs the light um, also and both of them are just inseparable and then we have the third player, Pluto, that in this particular deck, and I'm using uh, right here this deck, it's a mass-produced deck, it's called What's in Your Stars, 
an astrology deck for daily guidance <coughs> and Pluto uh, in this particular deck it's just um, has the keyword control and it says a marionette dances on its strings and when I read um, the Sabian degrees for you I find it quite interesting I think there's some deep undercurrents that are happening um, for the collective right now and during this time and there's a lot of stuff that goes off uh, on under the surface and even the full moon when the light of the moon is the fullest and reflects the sun isn't um, maybe bright enough to really show um, the undercurrents of um, systemic powers maybe that shifting changing need to shift want to change so uh, let's just take a look at this so um, let's start with so I wrote down here you know the moon is on 29 degrees um, Capricorn so if we go into the Sabian symbol book by Rain Rudyard, Dane Rudyard the oh, it's feisty, sorry the 30 degrees of Capricorn because we go one degree up because the moon is 29 degrees and a couple of minutes so we go um, one up and um, so it's the last degree of Capricorn right and it says a secret meeting of men responsible for executive decisions in world affairs so we are not talking about the power control or you know the the power plays um, that are local to any country they actually world affairs that are being maybe you know played with um, at this moment in a very very deep um, instinctive because Pluto is conjoining the moon in opposition to the Sun in opposition to this maybe awareness of brightness or light um, so that's quite interesting where this position where it is positioned and um, it, it speaks about the reference to the reference about executive power so something wants to be done about the affairs in the world it also speaks from the more um, philosophical and spiritual perspective about our inner government and it's very interesting that we are talking Capricorn because Capricorn is one of the oldest constellations um, and the zodiac signs based on this constellation is half fish half gold um, so it has this very kind of earthly um, side to itself but it has also this very ancient um, watery sign to a uh, side to itself as well and Capricorn uh, this is the astrological holistic astrological cards by Carnizor a great uh, friend of mine and Capricorn speaks about commitment and um, the whole realm of Capricorn when we look at the sky where the stars of Capricorns are speak uh, Carney calls it the realm of the diamond this is where we actually polish our character this is where we polish um, uh, polish our uh, values where we had to look you know it can come with hardships because to polish a diamond is not so easy right it comes with a lot of muck and you have to use some force and some commitment and some discipline to make it happen and then we have that conjunction with Pluto there which speaks about metamorphosis but of course it's this um, discernment and the will the power to use this energy uh, in the right right way so something is happening in the world affairs right with within executive power uh, within secret meeting of men responsible for these decisions and the power to assume responsibility for crucial choices arrived at after mature discussions with those who share this power so this can uh, you know I, I just found it interesting that something like this is happening especially when this place and these players are active and especially this image I thought like that's interesting and then when we go to 29 degrees of Sun which is 30 degrees of Cancer um, if we look for this degree 30 degrees of Cancer says a daughter of the American Revolution so that's also interesting cancer is a sign that's prone to memories it's a sign of the mother is very connected with the moon so we have this opposition of like sun being in 
uh, in Cancer, you know, and Sun is a fiery energy. It's like in watery Cancer, and Cancer is the sign of memory, a sign of the lineage, a sign of like, you know, willingness to go to war, to fight for what you love, for what you hold dear. So the prestige and conservatism of a long maintained heritage. And this is could have to do with glorification of the past. So it's interesting to have this opposition of Moon glorifying the past, kind of being really attached to what was. Sun that has this man you know, meeting and creating executive power, but they informed by this Pluto, like, are they going to be stirred uh, by, um, by the waves of unconscious, you know, or memory or yeah, glorification of the past um, that's going to stir them from the unconscious level? Um, uh, yeah, it, it's powerful. I think it's very powerful. And then the Neptune, which adds to it, it's actually in the but in sextile to to these energies, so um, it's not. But with Neptune, it's never. I I at least found out with Neptune if it's a positive, um, like a trine, you know, or sextile, or if it's opposition of square. Any type of aspect with Neptune, Neptune dissolves stuff, and and um, like maybe sextile just makes it easier. To, I hope that will be easier to use this energy for some sort of healing as well. But if we go with, uh, and look at 30 degrees of Pisces, so it's the last degree of the zodiac, a majestic rock formation resembling a face is idealized by a boy who takes it as his ideal of greatness and as he grows up begins to look like it. The power of clearly visualized ideals to mold the life of the visualizer. The keyword is archetype, archetypalization. So this is a cyclic transformation. And I think that's what we are dealing with as well. Cyclic transformation that's happening. Um, a lot of cycles are ending since 2020. You can watch my video oops, on 2020. And there is a lot of um, endings that happens. And these degrees shows that there is big shifts that are going on right now in our world. When we look at the sign of Capricorn, um, because as I said, like this full moon is happening in the stars of Capricorn, in the zodiac sign of Capricorn. So it's very much a lot of Capricornian energy, much more than the first full moon. So in this deck, the what's in your stars, Capricorn comes with a couple of cards. So it speaks about leadership. Um, and so geese fly in formation. Uh, we should all have a chance to take the lead. So there is something like, you know, taking the inner leadership, inner government, um, being able to see what our governments are doing and remembering that the governments actually should work for us, not other way around. Um, it's just such a fascinating time to think about how can we change the systems um, that, that, that there is more um, awareness of what is actually happening. Confidence versus despondency when it comes to like emotional side of Capricorn. And that's interesting because when I looked also at the Astro Tarot, which I got from my good friend Antonio, Thanks, Antonio. I love this deck. We have this um, moon is connected to Cancer energy and uh, Capricorn is connected to Saturn energy, right? So moon and Saturn kind of mix the um, energies here and Cancer and Capricorn. And we have this what looks like a starving boy, maybe, and this mother, but you know, the energy is kind of like it feels starvational. It feels like there is lack of resources. It feels like there is poverty. There is no warmth. There is no connection between the mother and the child. And I feel Capricorn can get very like kind of hungry for power, goal setting, ambitions. Uh, and that's why it's so really important 
to create this transformation, this metamorphosis by commitment to your inner diamond, to your inner character, that despite of what has happened to you, what story you had, what childhood you had, you an adult now and Saturn uh, that rules Capricorn reminds you that you are an adult now. You may have chosen all that, you know, that, ex that you experience. Don't look at your life just from this perspective of this one life on earth. Um, take into consideration bigger forces that come to play because Saturn and Capricorn, they are connected to time. And here we have this patience um, that the hands of the clock move slowly, you know, so there is a um, like reminder that like work, it takes time to polish the diamond. It takes time to create and respond um, within your chosen morals and chosen character. It takes time to develop. It takes time to um, to grow as a human um, with capital H. And then forward thinking with Capricorn as well, which I found quite interesting, the spirit of Capricorn. And maybe that comes with, you know, how interesting this, um, this glyph works that we mostly in our nowadays world see one side of Capricorn, but there is so much more to Capricorn uh, to see. And this one has, says a raven hides its food cachet. A raven is one of the few animals that demonstrates the capacity for delayed gratification. There is a benefit to thinking about what you may need or want in the future. This is your gentle reminder to plan ahead. So um, Capricorn also known for planning ahead, but I think that is, um, I love the image of like reconnecting with the stars and what the stars are telling us. In Egyptian uh, astrology, in Julie Kuchia, Watts, Dex, Capricorn is connected to the moon god that guides the sun through the night, you know, so that the sun can be reborn. And uh, it's such a beautiful, um, a beautiful image of Capricorn being a guide uh, through this, you know, waves of, uh, of, of the moon on unconscious. I wanted to also look at these two last degrees, um, I mean, two more degrees of uh, Uranus and Mercury. So let's check Uranus and 27 degrees Taurus. This degree says an old Indian woman selling an artifact of her tribe to passers-by. Peaceful adaptation to collective needs. And um, the um, keyword or whatever we are working on with this degree is adjustment. And um, I have to mention that this book sometimes, it was written in 1930s. Uh, it's it's racist <laughs> to put it plainly. Certain degrees, especially Aquarius one, oh, I, I just cringe when I read it. So you've got to take it with you know a blink of an eye and um, just grain of salt. But I think as a system though, it works quite well. So um, I think uh, rewriting a couple of those degrees, um, even not degrees themselves, as the more comment commentary about the degrees. Would, uh, would do us a lot of justice. Um, uh, but yeah, adjustment and Uranus, because it comes with this revolutionary energy and it revolutionizes the thinking mind as well. So now they kind of, you know, in the square aspect when they both on the kind of like a tug of war, um, there's like just a lot of combustible energy. Mercury is in Leo. It's like, you know, I want to express it. And Uranus is in Taurus. It's just quite like has to move the fixed earth. So when we check, um, so with Uranus, we have adjustment and um, we have adaptation to collective needs. And then 27 degrees Leo. Oh, that's interesting. So adjustment from Uranus to um, 27 Leo, where the Mercury is during this full moon, says the luminescence of dawn in the eastern sky. Eastern sky always like that sets our ascendant, that sets our mission, that sets how we look at the world. And this one is saying the exalting challenge 
of new opportunities at the threshold of a new cycle. So that's quite fascinating because yeah, all these degrees are kind of showing um, and this full moon is filled with degrees of like power, power shifts on the deep level, control versus trust, control versus commitment to new vision, um, love versus uh, glorification of the past. And, um, you know, in some way, um, the stars of Capricorn really remind us of being committed to polishing and exaggerating the purity of where we want to go and the purity of our vision. So 27 Leo is, while the rainbow marks the end of the, cri of the crisis, early dawn indicates the real beginning of the new period of activity. So here we have the keyword is illumination. The crisis as and the blessings it has brought to us are relatively unusual events. Every day has its dawn, which we should meet with a pure heart and clear mind. Alpha, Dawn and Omega, the concluding peak experience are opposites yet the same. So this is quite interesting, I think, from the perspective of, of this full moon. And now if you just want to take a look at, um, at the stars, so I just, I'm using the midpoint method by Adan Cimenti. You have 13 constellations on the ecliptic, the path of the sun as visible from earth. Scorpio and Ophiuchus share the, you know, the part of the sky and uh, on the ecliptic, Ophiuchus has his feet on Scorpio and Scorpio has its tail on the ecliptic. Uh, and we have the moon here at the very beginning of Capricorn and it's in opposition to the sun in the constellation of Cancer. Pay attention that real sky constellations are not all equal, so we wouldn't be able to have, you know, all these exact degrees. The oppositions sometimes are not exact oppositions, but that's how the sky works. We have the Mars-Uranus not that far away because we had this big conjunction with Algol recently. Um, uh, we have um, Saturn retrograding, moving slowly into the constellation of Aquarius. Yeah, and we see that the the moon is actually in um, trine to, to Mars and it's in conjunction to Pluto. But we have similar energy coming through the stars of Capricorn and we have um, Mars in Taurus. So it's quite earthy energies that that, that are being activated in us right now, plus that sun in Cancer that brings us the water element added. So to sum it up for you, just take a look where you have um, Capricorn and Cancer in your chart and just see what's being illuminated because full moon is time of illumination and that's when things can come to the surface, can be more visible. Um, be aware that Pluto is involved in, uh, in this game. So there might be some unconscious, powerful forces at play that may not be as visible um, as we want and we can feel influenced by, by these forces. I'm, I'm thinking that um, this full moon will show us a lot of big shifts or you know maybe it won't show us yet it might not quite come up to the surface but I think during this time big decisions are being made um you know the the men are meeting uh, we just had I think NATO meetings we had this um shooting at Donald Trump that I think also will have some consequences to how things are done. I'm hoping that that um, sextile to Neptune and maybe this Uranus squaring Mercury will try to figure out, you know, the tension uh, will be creative and in some way healing, that we try to figure out all new ways of resolving um, situations and creating maybe new better systems will slowly sip through to our human consciousness so that we can slowly pick it up and start visualizing this thing and I think because of Capricorn and because of this path of commitment and the realm of the diamond 
where we are often asked to act even um, not especially against our instinctual nature you know instinct will tell us like slap him or her if she annoys me you know the, there is this sense of like uh, reaction reactiveness whereas capricorn is like patience discipline time and um, taking responsibility and growing up maturing as a human being polishing the hearts polishing the minds and aligning this so I think it's intense energy, but a lot of stuff is happening underneath the surface. Uh, so be aware of power plays in your relationships as well. Be aware about power plays in families and how maybe you are asked to, uh, you know, mature and um, find your own inner authority, your own inner gather government in yourself. And there, uh, I think the big shifts of power are happening right now under the surface. So commit to love, commit, commit to um, being brave, being courageous to be yourself. Uh, but remember that you are not an island because yourself is part of every other being, living being on this earth and part of earth itself. And so you are never just individual. That's it. Uh, so I think there's like big shifts going on. That's what I wanted to share. And also, if you are curious about your astrology, I have um, this special for my astrology, tropical astrology sessions, and um, they last only for a couple of days. They finish just after the full moon. Full moon is on 21st of July, and the special uh, on either two hour really in-depth astrological consultation uh, via Zoom uh, live, or I can video record it just like in this format for you. Um, you can take a look, it's going to be linked below. And I also have real um, sky astrology sessions, which I call spiral astrology, when I use a lot of images and I speak about the realms, I speak about um, maybe certain important stars. Like I looked at the stars and um, via projections, not via parents, via projections the, on, onto the ecliptic, the closest star was um, Procyon, which is in Canis Ma Minor uh, constellation. And it's interesting because it's a star that rises just before Sirius and it's a very powerful star. Um, and it's um, like a herald of Sirius coming, right? So I think we are going to, um, yeah, it's like it's time when things are being decided and we might hear what's, what's coming up very soon. So um, keep your vision pure. Keep your eyes on 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 the on on the love goal okay don't uh, give in to fear and just keep centered and grounded um yeah so thank you if you feel like getting a reading from me just hit me up bye